At American Trends, we only talk about what your social media is trending, so let's get right back to it. Remember our poll question tonight. Should the Iran nuclear deal be canceled? Please go vote. We want your responses. We'll announce them at the end of the program. Here to give us more insight into the deception of the American people by President Obama and Ben Rhodes, his assistant, is Dr. Herb London. Dr. London is the president of the London Center for Policy Research and co-author of the new book, The Encyclopedia of Militant Islam. Welcome to the show, Dr. London. Great pleasure to be with you tonight. Terrific to have you. So we talked about this a few times in the show already, Dr. London. President Obama wanted this Iran nuclear deal with Iran as far back as 2012. Can you give us some behind-the-scenes insight? Well, I think it goes back even earlier than 2012. The president thought about this as a potential legacy, and also because there was a belief in this administration that the stabilizing influence in the Middle East would be Iran. The president also thought about this as his legacy, and so he was willing to engage in any deception in order to make sure that this legacy, of course, was achieved. And in fact, Ben Rhodes made it happen. He made it happen by convincing members of the press, as well as our allies, that in fact there's an organization in Iran called moderates. Of course, there's no such, there's no such animal. There's no such thing as a moderate within Iran. But that deception was absolutely necessary in order to convince Israel not to attack Iran and also to convince other allies that the Iran deal was perfectly sensible. Well, Ben Rhodes called the Iran deal, quote, the center of an arc, unquote. So how does this deal relate to the rest of the Middle East? Well, it relates to the rest of the Middle East because, in fact, the Iran deal was designed in large part to create some sort of balance between the Sunni forces and the Shia forces, the Iran deal being obviously a tilt to Shia. What it means, in effect, is that now the, Iran, the Sunni groups will have to put together some sort of counterweight to deal with the Iranian, the Iranian empire. And there is an Iranian empire brought about in large part by the role that the Obama administration has played. All you have to do is look at Damascus and look at Sana'a and look at Baghdad, and you already see the signs of the empire that's emerged. Plus the fact the United States is providing $150 billion of sanction relief for Iran in an economy that's roughly $8 billion in its entirety. So you get a sense that this administration was thinking very seriously about the role that Iran would play in the Middle East, and this was one dimension of it. Right, but so to think that this government would engage in this kind of bogus activity to deceive the members of the press in the United States, as well as our allies, is really quite remarkable. Well, let's, There's nothing let's quite talk like that. it in American history. Let's talk this about is that. This an expression of postmodernism. So Ben Rhodes does an in-depth interview with the New York Times. He basically pukes out a confession that he deliberately deceived the American public and the press. Why did the president and Ben Rhodes deliberately deceive the American people on this deal? Well, they deliberately proceed to deceive the American people in large part because the president saw this as his legacy. He wanted to see this as the final moment for the Obama administration, the great accomplishment of the Obama administration, rather than bringing about peace through some sort of warlike behavior, he would argue we did it through negotiation. Of course, the negotiation itself gave Iran almost everything it wanted, including the possibility that Iran will have nuclear weapons if they cheat, perhaps in the short term. If they do not cheat, Maybe it's eight years, 10 years, or 12 years, but they will be able to acquire nuclear weapons. Oh, absolutely. I've written extensively on this. So from a political perspective, Dr. London, does this attach to Hillary Clinton at all in the 2016 election? She was Secretary of State previous to Kerry. Uh, is this going to be part of her legacy that she has to defend uh, in the upcoming presidential? She can't rebuke the president of the United States. She was the Secretary of State and in fact had to have some knowledge of this. And of course, the negotiations that took place with Israel and other nations during the course of these deliberations with the P5 plus one clearly suggested that the United States was engaged in this activity because they, have, they believe that there is moderation within Iran, that they kind of winked and said, oh, I know you may not be happy with the, the facile description of this, uh, this agreement, but by and large, 
there are really reasonable people within Iran who will conduct themselves properly and in the end will bring about some sort of peaceful resolution in that part of the world. Yeah, not true in, in my opinion. So not now, true at all. Now we see Iran threatening to close the Straits of Hormuz to U.S. traffic. Uh, they're clearly not our friend. In fact, those are the actions and the threats of an enemy, wouldn't you say? Well, the, the, the clearest sign of this, the clearest manifestation of Iranian ambitions was when an American vessel lost its way in the Gulf of Hormuz. If a friendly nation were to see that vessel, they'd say, turn around, move three miles in the other direction, and you'll be back on course. But what the Iranians did was they forced American sailors on their knees. They forced the one-woman sailor to wear a hijab. They put themselves in the position where they put this on TV. They took their weapons away. They put the, had the American sailors put their hands behind their backs, indicating some form of surrender. And then they publicized this throughout Iran. That is not the actions of a friend. Right. I couldn't agree more. It was humiliation of the American uh, sailors uh, without precedent, actually, in a non-wartime situation. So if we get a Republican president, which in this case would be Donald Trump, is there a path out of this morass? Is there a way out of this deal? Well, I think that one of the things that would have to be done, first thing, is the repudiation of the deal. Again, Donald Trump's views vary so significantly from day to day. I'm not entirely clear about where he stands, although he did say that the Iran deal is a terrible deal to the United States. Undoing the, ag the activities of the Obama administration in the Middle East will be very complicated. Uh, President Sisi of Egypt, who I've met with a couple of times, said very clearly, I love America, but America doesn't love me. We've got to reproduce the confidence that once existed between the United States and our allies in that part of the world. The same is true in Israel. Netanyahu would say, you know, I feel that the United States is a key element in whatever happens in this part of the world, but I could not rely on American views during the course of the Obama administration. So again, reestablishing that kind of confidence is going to be the first task of a new president, and it's not an easy matter to resolve. Well, I can allay your, allay your fears a little bit, uh, Dr. London. We had uh, Dr. Waleed Farah on with us Friday night, who, as you may know, is helping with foreign policy. Uh, He's one on of my Trump senior campaign. senior advisors, so I know Waleed quite well. Yeah, and he is a friend as well. And he explained to us that one of the first uh, things that would happen under a Trump administration is a very strong uh, reattachment of the previous friendships uh, with Jordan, uh, with Qatar. Uh, with uh, Egypt uh, and other Sunni states, including Saudi Arabia, to remind them that we are friends and especially a very big hug to Israel. So well, I, I, th there will be a realignment in the Middle East, uh, according to uh, Dr. Ferris. Look, I, I very much appreciate his comments. I'm, I'm a great admirer of Walid. I know him quite well. But one of the difficulties is the suspicion that exists in the countries that you, you mentioned. Uh, there is no doubt that an attempt will be made of that kind, but the suspicion is very widespread. If you spend any time in Saudi Arabia today, they'll tell you, we can't rely on the United States anymore. They're going to try and create their, their, their own defense condominium because they feel that the United States is an unreliable partner. And Waleed is quite right. I mean, obviously, the effort should be made, but I can assure you that many of the allies in that part of the world are quite suspicious. Dr. London, we've got to leave it there. Thank you so much. More America Trends coming up.